Hello, this is Matt Bergman, and this is Changing Learning Through Audioboo. So a little bit about myself before we get started. My wife Jen and I live in Lidditz, Pennsylvania with our two kids, Savannah and Trey. And I've been teaching at the Milton Hershey School now for about four years, where I teach business and I help teachers integrate technology in the classroom. It's the largest private residential school in the nation, and 100% of our kids from pov are from poverty. So it's very, very rewarding. I'm also a graduate instructor and most recently a course designer for RTC or Regional Training Center. We offer graduate courses in Pennsylvania and Maryland through Gratz College and in New Jersey through the College of New Jersey. I most recently co-designed a face-to-face -face and an online course in Universal Design for Learning uh, with a good friend of mine, John Mundorf. I'm also a member of the CAST professional learning cadre or Center for Applied Special Technology where I work with educators across the nation on how to implement the Universal Design for Learning framework. Probably my biggest passion though is my blog at bergman-udl.blogspot.com where I teach teachers and share ideas from other educators across the country on how to implement educational technology in the classroom. I also have a website called Learn, Lead, Grow. So, the objectives today are what is Audioboo and how can I use it and how are other teachers across the globe using it. So first of all, what exactly is Audioboo? Well, it's a free social podcasting program where users can create podcasts called Boos on any device that they choose. So whether it's your laptop, it's your PC, it's your iPhone or your Android device, you can easily record these Boos and then upload them because it's all cloud-based, which is unbelievable and unbelievably easy. You may not know this, but it is the leading audio social network referred to as the YouTube of audio. It has a library of over 10 million clips across the globe and it just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, channels of dedicated content like ESPN and CNBC and the BBC, even Microsoft um, are very visible on this website. So how exactly do you record a Boo? Well, it's very, very simple. You create a free account at audioboo.fm, and then you could choose any device that you will be using to record. You could use your laptop, you could use your PC, you could use your iPad, you could use your iPhone. So I'm gonna show you the old school version for PC and Mac users on the uh, web uh, where you'd go to audioboo.fm. It's very simple. You visit the website at audioboo.fm and click on record or upload. When that happens, you'll get a free um, recording platform that looks like so. And it'll give you the option of whether you want to upload your original content from, say, if you did something on GarageBand or Audacity or you can use this platform for your own recording. Now, the free version of Audioboo will only allow you to have three minutes worth of content to record, so be careful. Once you start recording, you can click the Start Recording button. You can preview your recording, you can restart your recording, but when you're happy, you can click Happy and add a title. When that happens, you're gonna to need to add information, such as a title, a description with hashtags, what category is it most likely for you would be education, and then add an image. So this not only allows you to share audio, but it allows you to share an image as well in the form of a picture. And you can tag everything as well. When you're ready, you're gonna click on publish and you can share it with people on your website by embedding uh, content right here. You can share it on a board, which is almost like a playlist, or you can share it through social media platforms like Google+, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and you can even email content. So let me give you a step-by-step -step video tutorial of how to use Audioboo, and you can access that at tinyurl.com forward slash M4O4DOH or you can take a look at the website uh, that this presentation is embedded in and it will be there. There's also a video on how to use the actual iPhone app as well. Very, very simple. So why exactly is Audioboo needed? Well, learner diversity in the 21st century is the rule and not the exception. It's also known as learner variability. 
And the way that we learn is as different as our DNA or fingerprint. So what exactly does this mean? Well, that means that students, they vary in what, how, and what they want to learn. And so you have these three different brain networks in the brain, the recognition, the strategic, and the effective, all working together to create an authentic, customized learning experience for students. And so CAST, uh, or the Center for Applied Special Technology, has developed a set of universal design for learning principles that basically say, hey, look, there are some systematic or predictable differences in learners. And here they are. And here's some principles to accomplish them. So students, they do need different ways to represent information through video clips and hands-on activities. And we accomplish that through providing them multiple means of representing a concept. Sometimes students, they need to show us different ways that they know um, how to do things. So for example, they may create a video or a skit or write a paper or create a PowerPoint presentation. So sometimes we need to provide students with multiple means of action and expression. And last but not least, students engage with content differently. And so we may need to engage them differently um, in the classroom because there's no one way to learn or assess and yet sometimes we make our students line up like this animal line and we assess them all the same way and each has a different comfort level and some have an absolute advantage and some have an absolute disadvantage as soon as they even put their name on their paper so there's not just one way to learn so audio boot provides a different way for students to learn and show what they know so how could I personally use it? That's the question that I first started thinking and wondering when I wanted to use Audioboom. And so the first thing that I did is I thought, well, I could provide options for people who read my blog posts. My blog was starting to catch on, but I wanted to give people different ways of reading it. So I embedded this right here, this, this audio uh, reader from Audioboom into my blog and so about 90 percent of the posts that I do I incorporate this type of platform in there so that participants can either read or they can listen to content it's great for those who are on the go or those who have different learning styles or even those who may have a visual disability and they are ed interested in educational technology so by designing for all from the beginning uh, you can actually benefit all and so then I started beginning to think, okay, how could I use Audioboo in my classroom? And so one of the ways that I thought about that was options for writing prompts. Now I've been using VoiceThread for students to respond verbally or in writing to writing prompts that I'd give them. But the problem with VoiceThread is that the free version only allows you free five free threads and that's it. So I started looking around and I found that Audioboo accomplished what I needed. And so the very first step that I did was I created an audio recording and a text of my writing prompt. So for example, we were starting a new unit in my honors class and we were introducing people um, in the class on how to develop a strategic plan. So I wanted to link that with something that they already knew and that was planning a party. The second step was I had my students come in and create a free Audioboo account at audioboo.fm. And as they created an account, I had them listen to the prompt or read the prompt. And I had to share that through a number of different ways. Now what I typically do is I put that on Edmodo and I have my students access the material there through my social network on Edmodo but you could you could actually share the URL and a Word document if you wanted uh, to create a tiny URL you could um, and shorten up the URL you could use Twitter Pinterest Facebook LinkedIn or you could even email it to kids or you could even generate a QR code that students could use their mobile device to access this writing prompt so when students listen to the prompt they had some different options on how they would show their knowledge and so they could record or as you can see right here they could type in their response after listening to the writing prompt and it was a really great way to create interaction with my students in just a few clicks of a mouse another thing that my students did was they created an NPR broadcast I had them imagine that they were an NPR um, 
reporter and their job was to report on a recall or product recall and so they had to gather the most important facts of the story and share that within a three minute time period so I want to share with you one of the clips uh, uh, from my student uh, Kayvon Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the K Barn Show on your favorite station, 2020 The Score. Today, it is February 5th, 2010. I am Kayvon Asamani, and this afternoon, we will be focusing on the huge recall Toyota had a few weeks ago when consumers discovered that their gas pedals were getting stuck when drivers were letting go of the pedal. This caused their vehicles to continue to go even when drivers wanted to stop. So that full clip is available uh, on my website for this AudioBoo pod, audio boo, um, presentation. So you can check that out. just want to give you a little clip on that. So I know you, what you may be thinking. Oh my gosh, what about privacy? Because, you know, there's all kinds of things that, you know, we as educators are concerned about. Now I want to be upfront with you. Boos are made public if you do go to the audioboo.fm site or you have your kids use one of the platforms as mentioned earlier. And you might want to think about COPA. You know, what about COPA and everything? So I have a solution for you and that is the Edmodo app. It's a great alternative to just using Audioboo by itself. If you go into Edmodo in the App Store, you can download the Audioboo app and create a private classroom where students can record booze and share booze and it's only contained within that Edmodo classroom. What's great is, is that you can still access the Audioboo library of over 10 million clips, but you can upload this content and upload your private content to your own private Audioboo Edmodo library. And what's great is that student responses are made private. Now the only issue is that this Audio Boo for Education app is not free. It's $4.99 for unlimited use among the teacher and the students. So as soon as you buy this, what will happen is students in any class that you create on Edmodo will be able to use and access this app. Not a bad deal. So I wanted to just focus on how are other educators around the globe using Audioboo. And so I want to show you 10 ways that you can use Audioboo in your classroom. Lindsay Clinton is a librarian in Yukon, Oklahoma. And she wanted to encourage her students to read from Oklahoma's list of books called the Sequoia Book Challenge. And so she had her students read different books in the library and create a trailer. This trailer or summary or book review was then recorded by students using the Audioboo app. She then generated a QR code and put it on a poster along with the copy of the book cover. Students were able to then, as they were listening to books, or, or wanting to read a book, they could scan the QR code and listen to the book review to see if that book was right for them or not. This is an example of one student's book review of Moon Over Manifest. Hi, I'm Delaney, and I'm going to tell you about the book Moon Over Manifest by Claire Vanderpool. This is a very exciting story. It is about a girl and her dad. It's kind of like a mystery because the fortune teller keeps giving you little pieces and the girl keeps finding little things. At the end, they all fit together. I recommend this book because it's a good story and it's cool how the past and the present hook up with each other. I had another uh, first grade kindergarten teacher. She actually had her kids write their own stories and she put a QR code on the back of the story um, as they created their own little booklet so that it could be shared with parents. What a great idea. So another thing is, is what did we learn today? Now think about the last five minutes of instruction in your classroom. It's often time for packing up and socializing and starting homework and let's say uh, discipline problems as well. So how can you use the last five minutes more effectively? 
But what if we used Audioboo to use the last five minutes of class more effectively? This is potentially what could happen. If you used it just five minutes per day, you would add 25 minutes per week or essentially a half or one class period a week. If you used it five minutes a day for the entire school year, you would earn an extra 100, 100 minutes per month or 900 minutes per year or two full class days of instruction. So what could you do? How could you use it? Could you have your kids boil down a one to three minute summary of what was taught answering the essential question of the day? I mean, the Common Core State Standards emphasize the importance of reflection. Why couldn't we just make it protocol in our classrooms? You know, technology works best when we give students opportunities to represent content differently or show what they know differently or engage in their learning differently and this is the perfect tool to do so. So here's an example of at UConn Public Schools in Oklahoma each student is either working by themselves or with a group of students to define a term or concept that was learned in class that day. And it's providing multiple means of representation because students are attaching a picture. And as you can see right here, they created a, a picture by themselves and took a screenshot of that. And you also have audio. So let's check out this presentation on rainforest biomes. The rainforest takes up 6% of the world. This biome has many animals and insects. Did you know only about half the rainforest insect species have never been discovered by scientists? The rainforest also has tons of plants. Did you know that the monster flower can grow up to three feet long? The rainforest is divided into four layers. The emergent layer, the canopy, the understory, and the forest floor. My name is Allison, and thank you for listening to this audio boo. How effective was that? I mean, here's a, a student that's providing a 30-second to one-minute summary of what was learned. And what a great study tool that could be. I mean, this helps all learners in your classroom, whether they're using it as a study tool, whether they want to revisit a concept, or even if they had a learning or hearing disability, they could listen to this again. Not a bad way of doing things. So maybe what you could do is you could have a student boo of the day. Assign a different student in your classroom to be responsible for sharing what was learned that day. Or perhaps you have all students record the same content and you feature a student version of the day. So why exactly is this important? Well, think about it. I love this quote by Dennis Harper, from founder of, of Gen Yes. He said that if a 50-year-old teacher takes a web development class and produces a website on the Civil War for the 13-year-old kids, and then a 13-year-old kid makes a website on the Civil War, assuming that they have the same content, which one do you think the 13-year-olds are going to learn better from? And that is so true, because you know why? Kids learn best from kids. And sometimes we need to give them the tools to show what they know and express what they know. And this can add expert learning and just a culture of learning to your classroom. So another option is options for reading. I was talking to an English teacher who wanted to incorporate audio boo into their classroom. And they were talking about poetry. Now poetry is a really, really interesting form of writing because not only is it can you read it silently but it's very very effective when you hear it but often well we don't necessarily have as much time as we'd like for students to listen to recorded poetry so this right here is a common poem footprints in the sand and this was a recording that we found on a poem that they were doing in class Footprints in the sand One night I dreamt I was walking along the beach with the Lord Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky 
So I have the full recording on my website, but the idea is that sometimes hearing somebody's cadence, hearing somebody's expression is so, so very powerful. And sometimes giving students options on what they read, whether it may be an article and you record yourself reading the article, or whether they're listening to a poem by somebody else reading it, Options for reading are so, so effective. Canadian philosopher Marshall McLuhan said that the medium is a message. And there's a lot of truth to that. Because Carnegie Mellon University did a study where they had students listen to a book being read to them. And then they had them read the same exact book or article. And they found that it activated different parts of the brain. And students had different memories and different connections with the article based on just something as simple as an audio copy versus a text copy. So options are all, always available and always helpful when you have options for reading because it provides scaffolding for maybe your struggling reader. This is an example of Peter the Rabbit being read. Let me just share this with you here. The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter, read aloud by Connor Martin and Maggie Quant. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. So that right there is uh, students reading this particular tale of Peter Rabbit, older students doing that. It may not be bad for a student who is a struggling reader to listen to this, to read aloud with this, and it could be very, very helpful in their development and fluency. It's perfect for auditory learners who may, well, they may not really enjoy reading, but they may follow along and listen with that article, um, or they may just listen to the actual article or story on their way to a sports practice or a sporting event. It's perfect for ESL students and their development of language, and even it's a great motivational tool. So my next idea was inspired by Temple University in the Instructional Learning Technology Program. Last year, I completed my certificate there, um, and I developed a portfolio. One of the requirements was that I get some ELL and ESL experience. And so I had to develop a lesson on the PSYOP model on my portfolio. And so after doing a little bit of research, I came across a school called the Michael Faraday School in London who uses Audioboo to develop the language skills in ESL and ELL students. And what they do is they take students and they have them tell a little bit about themselves and they record it. And then a few weeks later, after they've worked on language skills and language development, they listen to it again and the results are absolutely amazing. So with the PSYOP model, um, I'm just breaking it down. This is not word for word, but it focuses on lesson preparation and background knowledge and communication and methods and strategies. But right here in the red, making learning social and then giving ESL and ELL students time to practice and apply is so important. And so, well, that's what Audioboo can do. Here's the tangible growth example from the Michael Faraday School that I was talking about. What happens is it follows this time period where there's a recording, then there's practice and instruction, and then there's second recording. Let's listen to Ahmad here. Hello, my name is Ahmad. I like swimming, football, tennis, and I have two sisters. Uh, I like so that was Ahmad in the very beginning. A few weeks later, Ahmad records himself again. Listen to the difference. Hello, my name is Ahmad. I have two sisters and I have a 3DS. I play my 3DS in the living room on the couch. And I, my two sisters are family. They're both older than me. I like everyone in my family because they're, they're nice to me. 
So, wow, what a way to share tangible growth. I mean, we're always focusing on sharing results and tangible growth and, and just, you know, progress monitoring. And here's a great way that you could share this and potentially you could embed it into an IEP of some sort. So my next idea was inspired by an Edutopia article uh, by uh, Beth Holland, and she was talking about the writing process, how it's changed, how writing 3.0 uh, occurs when you have kids brainstorm and you provide options on how they organize and brainstorm information, and then they collaborate and gather feedback, and then they provide a final product. And so encouraging students to write, Audioboo could be a motivational tool to share their ideas. And it also allows, once students have recorded a boo of their writing and students listen to it, they could actually comment on it, they could share it with their parents, and it could also increase the quality of their writing because, well, peer pressure isn't too bad. So this is Emma, and Emma wrote a nice little poem called Christmas is Coming. Let's listen to her. Christmas is coming, Christmas is coming, people are humming. Christmas songs all around me. Santa is coming down the chimney. Santa's beard is very itchy. Christmas songs all around me. Santa's cookies on a plate in his tummy. Don't be late. I love that poem. So encouraging students to write may even in your classroom take the form of writing prompts. What if you gave students different ways to respond, like I did earlier, on how they respond to a writing prompt? Perhaps you record your writing prompt on Audioboo and you provide the text in the description part, and then you give students two options for replying. They could record their response and develop that, and that's perfect for the student who may have difficulty getting their thoughts on paper. And then you have option number two for the writers who want to just respond and they don't necessarily want to hear their voice. So giving students options to show what they know isn't necessarily a bad idea. So really providing structured feedback from classmates is another important element of this writing prompt. To have them collaborate and to gather feedback and to just get information from their classmates can be very, very helpful. And so if you're concerned about maybe somebody who is not in the class recording feedback and audio uh, with a student, you can always use the Edmodo app for privacy. But think about this. There's just an increased likelihood that your students will at some point in their career take an online course. From the Sloan Consortium in 2012, the number of students taking at least one online course has now surpassed 6.7 million. So change it has been happening and it's increasing. Now this is Greg Miller. He's an assistant superintendent at a school in Alberta, Canada. And each week, students in grades three through five compete in what is called the 100 word challenge. What they do is they respond by writing to a, a writing prompt, a weekly writing prompt, and then they take it a step further. They read it and then post it to the blog and then submit it to 100 word challenge. It's a great idea. So the next idea that I have was inspired by a a post that I recently made called Engaging Students Differently, Google Voice to Develop Language Skills. Uh, at, at the University of Akron, I met a teacher who's a foreign language teacher who uses Google Voice to uh, have her students call in and record and practice the foreign language. And if you remember my research on this SIOP model um, earlier, um, talking about the principles of the SIOP model, it talked about learning being social and having opportunities to practice. Well, that also occurs too when we're learning a foreign language. And so this, this is not a bad idea to have students use Audioboo for prompts and responses and practicing grammar and speaking skills and replying to classmates in an ongoing discussion. 
It is in a public forum if you use the Audioboo website, but it can be self-contained if you use the Audioboo app. And what's great is, is that students can use multiple platforms in order to reply to this. There's been a lot of buzz about flipping the classroom as of late. And so teaching place value, who would have thought could be an audio boo file? Let me share this with you. First, I have one 100. Next, I have one 10. Finally, I have two ones. Let's see, that means my number is 112 is my number. What a great way to have students visually see the actual, and this is from the actual audio boo um, post, actually see the place value and then hear it from their teacher. It's a great way of doing things. I've done it, this in the past where I've offered answers to frequently asked questions so that students can press play and listen to that while I may be working with another struggling learner. I love this, the astronomy fact of the day. This is also a really neat way of having students flip the classroom. Could you possibly do the same thing? This is from a guy named Astronomer Adam. And what he did is he created an astronomy fact of the day and it increased interest and engagement in Hi everyone and welcome astronomy. to Astronomer Adam's Three Minute Wonders. And this wonder today is about Pluto. Now, when I was younger, I won't give away my age now, but I'm one less than 38, I would have referred to it as the planet Pluto. But now we don't refer to it as that anymore. And there are some people still that I come across in schools, kids who were too young to be around when it was declassified, or certainly too young to be aware, who either want to pick a fight about it or don't understand why Pluto was downgraded to what it is now. So even if this isn't necessarily content that you may be teaching in class, it, wouldn't it be neat to have different options for students as they complete assignments uh, at home or at school or ways to further explore your, your subject area? Not only would it increase interest, but it would increase engagement in that as well. Another idea is to use it to connect with parents. The school in, in the UK uses it as a class newsletter, school newsletter. So it allows you to engage parents differently. And they're more likely to engage and listen to a newsletter or listen to the school news, well, if they hear their kids. We always want to engage parents differently. This may not be a bad idea to do so. And it's a great way of sharing interviews and events and news in three minutes or less. So let's check out this school newsletter. Abercorn Primary School Weekly Newsletter, 13th of January 2014. Year 5 and Year 6 Swimming. Year 5 and Year 6 Swimming starts tomorrow. P permission slips were sent home last week. PTFA Meeting. There is a PTFA Meeting on Friday the 17th of January, this Friday at 2.30. Anyone and in... So what a really cool way of sharing information uh, with a community. Some of the most historic events in history are also available on Audio Boom. We Shall Overcome, the Martin Luther King speech, I Have a Dream speech, and even Malcolm X, his appearance on a television show about revolution, are all available for people to listen to. How powerful is that? Yeah, it may be available also on YouTube, but there's something powerful of listening to the human voice. It's why you're listening to this presentation right now, right? So the last idea is if you don't feel comfortable about something and you're not the expert, well, find somebody who is. Often we turn to YouTube clips to help our visual students, but have we ever thought about our auditory students? There's all sorts of education channels out there from the Michael Faraday School to the Average Guy to the Philosophize This or to individual posts made by people from all around the globe. There is certainly an answer to your question by going on YouTube or on, on YouTube at Audioboo. So the question is, why not use Audioboo? Well, let's, let's think about some of the common excuses that you may have, okay? Uh, excuse number one may be, well, my students wouldn't know how to use it. And I hate to break it to you, but it's a very, very easy to use process. It's simply 
open up the app or go to the website, click record, click publish, add a description and a picture, and you're ready to go. So it's a very easy to use interface. In fact, if you need tutorials on how to do that, they're included on the website containing all of this information about Audioboo. Excuse number two might be, well, I don't feel comfortable with all that web creation stuff. And I hate to break it to you, but you don't have to necessarily be an expert to use this in your classroom. You don't necessarily have to have it mastered. We live in the education 2.0 age, meaning, well, it's more like a spider web than you being the expert of everything. And so students often can help in learning these technologies because they're using them all the time anyways. And also think about this, students are creating anyways. 27% of teens ages 12 to 17 are already uploading content to YouTube anyways. And 64% of our teens are engaging in some sort of web creation through blogs, websites, videos, and mashups. So why not? Excuse number three, well, what about the privacy issues? Well, I told you earlier, I said, you know, boos are made public on Audioboo. However, if you use the Edmodo Audioboo app, all of these recordings can be recorded in a private area. And Audioboo is actually working with other platforms, learning platforms, in order to make this more accessible to students. So you may say, well, you know what, there's just not enough time. Uh, you know, I don't have enough time in the day to do this. I don't have enough time in the day to have my kids do this. But how are you using the last five minutes of your class anyways? What does it look like in your classroom? Because you very easily could put together a boo in 30 seconds to three minutes. And it doesn't take much effort at all. So you may say, well, you know what, I don't have enough technology in my classroom. And that's a valid argument. You know, everybody struggles with that. But Audioboo can be used on multiple platforms, from your iPad device to your iPhone to your Android device to your MacBook to your laptop to your desktop. It can be used. And what's great is, is that our students have access to more technology than ever before. So whether you're a BYOD program, a one-to-one -one initiative, or you have students with cell phones in their pockets, this may not be a bad idea to have students use. So my question is, why aren't you trying the YouTube of audio and audio boo? I just want to thank you for listening to this presentation. If you need any information, you can contact me at mattbergman14 at gmail.com or my Twitter handle at mattbergman14. Um, my blog address is bergman-udl.blogspot.com. And you can even visit my website, learn-lead-grow.weebly.com. Resources for today are available at tinyurl.com slash 06PWZFK. And as always, um, there are video clips, there are audio clips, and there are resources there to help you learn how to use this technology. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.